about radio. Hi guys, this is the little enclosure that I'm going to mount the um, antenna rotation control unit in. I've started drilling holes and here I'm cleaning the paintwork off so as I can mount the rectifier and use the case as a heat sink. I'll be making a good old fashioned uh, power supply with a transformer, rectifier and capacitor. Here I've got the transformer bolted into position and that's the rectifier, a little bridge rectifier and I put some heat sink compound on there just to make sure it makes good contact with the case that's a 4 amp rectifier and that's its home position I thought I'd share this with you um, I've got a, a terminal strip I'm putting on there and I've got a tiny little bolt and a little nut and that's the nut and even with a pair of tweezers I'm struggling every time I hold it there and then get the screwdriver engaged in the slot so the washer drops off uh, but a way to deal with that is with a bit of cellar tape and what I do is I've picked up the nut with the cellar tape and then I can apply it I hope I can get this uh, in and then I can just sort of dab that onto where it goes it really is a very convenient way to allow you to hold the knot and position it with the end of your finger and I say I find that very convenient here you can see I've fitted a 5 amp fuse to protect the transformer uh, against short circuit and rather than fit a fuse holder I've simply soldered it in place on the tag strip Sometimes it's very convenient to have two or more cables twisted together and uh, if you do that with your drill and then um, give them a pull before you release them from the chuck and you'll find they stay twisted together. Usually I'd have the far end in the vise and give it a good old yank. These are the front panel components in place, the meter, the uh, direction switch and the push button. This is the speed control trigger that I took out of the drill. I've put a piece of wire uh, around the switch and uh, soldered that so that actually sets the the speed and I've uh, also glued into position the switch um, uh, that's uh, the direction switch and I'll be using the direction switch on the front of the uh, uh, antenna rotation controller so now I've just got to work out how I'm going to mount this in the enclosure but I don't want to uh, sort of cover it in tape and insulate it because I want the, any heat to, to escape from this heat sink uh, which is almost certainly will be alive uh, or positive or negative I couldn't find any convenient enclosure to mount it in so I decided to make something out of a, a bit of UPVC drain pipe and you can see I've cut it and straightened it out with a little gas torch there just a bit of heat into it and uh, once I'd got a flat piece of material I was able to uh, shape it uh, to go around the switch and um, I haven't done anything uh, clever or exotic with it. A um, little hole just to position the switch uh, on the end there. And um, well, that's, uh, that's about it. I find it very convenient to use uh, something like this uh, UPVC plastic um, with a little bit of uh, heat on it have to be careful not to scorch it, you can see I've just scorched the very ends uh, there but um, there's all sorts of little devices and jigs and fixtures and moulds that you can make out of a, uh, a bit of drain pipe so um, uh, I, I never throw away any scrap ends uh, uh, there's always use for something um, and I uh, say it's very convenient 
Here you can see I've drilled a couple of holes to allow me to fix the enclosure and there I've uh, heated and folded down the corners to lock the switch into position. Uh, this is a little terminal strip that's going to go on the back of the box but I only want five screws so I've removed one and uh, you can see there I've cut it down so I've got the five terminals and uh, I'm going to fix them onto the back of this unit but I cover those holes up with a bit of that aluminium I, I had left over from the guard and there I drilled some holes, I actually drilled larger holes than that and uh, mounted the terminal block in place and uh, that's a view of it from the inside and here on the back I've just marked with a, a permanent marker the uh, colours of the cables and here you see the two potentiometers uh, one is to set zero and the other is to set the scale or the span and there's a, a couple of scaling resistors in there as well okay guys that's the uh, the finished item there and um, that's my little direction switch And I've put the uh, the push button on it, so it's um, uh, there's no way that it's going to get accidentally knocked and uh, cause a problem for me. But, uh, I'm very pleased with that. I've just got to share this story with you. Um, this is the back of that little meter box and uh, so I've had this box a long time in fact over 25 years and 25 years ago I put the meter in the front and I made an SWR meter standing wave ratio meter out of it and I could never get it to work right and I couldn't understand why and it's one of these where you have a coax cable that runs in a, a loop from uh, one socket to the other and uh, for the in and the out and then the sensor wire is tucked underneath the screen of the coax and you can see this is where the the coax was soldered all the way around i did everything but for the life of me i couldn't get it to work um just it just wouldn't sense the the, the standing wave and <laughs> 25 years later i realized why and where it happened obviously I bolted these two sockets in place and of course I made provision to actually ground the shield of both sockets or the screen on both sockets so uh, where I should have had a current running around the loop I was actually shorting it out with a metal case um, uh, I wish I'd have known that 25 years ago <laughs> but it, it's literally I've just seen it when I took it all apart it's, uh, there you go you're never too old to learn guys what I should have done of course is insulate uh, one or both of them so that the current only travels through the screen of the coax and uh, not short circuited across there there you go anyway I hope you found that interesting guys thanks for watching bye bye